So hello everybody and welcome to another Power Query video. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you create a daytime column for a calendar. Okay, I was supposed to do um, the solution for the Power Query challenge, but too many submissions. So I need a little bit more time. I just want to make a fair job for your work. So either later this week or at the latest on Monday. But with that said, how about we start with today's video, doing a date time calendar. So this is the formula that we're going to use, the M function that we're going to use. It is called list date times. And what it does is very, very easy. If you go here, the first part of the function is the first date that you want the calendar on, then how many lines you want. And then if it should be done every minute, every hour, every day, really cool. So how are we going to do this? The first thing we need to do, we know the date. We're going to do this from the 1st of January 2017. And uh, we need to calculate how many days or how many lines we want to have on our calendar. I'll show you that in a second. You'll see what I mean. And then this is duration. It is every minute we want to have it every hour. So we will change that. So how do we calculate how many days we have between today's date and 2017, 1st of January? We are going to start there. So if we go here, blank query, this is what we are going to do. Advanced editor. You can do it on the formula bar if you want. Uh, here, number of days. I'm going to change the name just because I prefer it that way. So I know what it's actually doing. And obviously, even better to write a little text that says what it's doing. So here we go. Daytime. I show you this on my M language course, which what kind of calculations you can do with the different values. So you can actually um, subtract dates to dates or to date times is part of the course. Go and check it out. If you want to learn more about M. So we have 2017, 01. 01, and then we have zero hours, zero minutes, zero seconds. And we want to subtract this with today's date. I'm going to hardcode today's date now, but at the end of the solution, we will remove the hardcoding. This is just so you can see how everything works, okay? So we will go in here, we put date time, and today is 2018, 19, actually, we've changed here. And then it's January, but it's 28th, and then zero, zero, zero. So if we click done, you will see here that it's given us the number of days between those two dates. It is given us in a, this is not a number, you see the format, right? So be careful with that, because it's going to give us problems later. I'll, I'll show you why. What we want to do is remove the minus sign just like that. Um, and for that, we just need to put 2019 first. And that will give us the same, but a positive number. So now we have the number of days. We don't have a number. We have the number of days. And uh, what we want to do is go in here and start generating a table. I'm going to show you how this function works. This is very, very easy. So let's do a new. Remove that. We don't want it. And here we put our first day of the calendar. We said that, and it's the 1st of January, 2017. So that's what we're going to put in there. And then zero, 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 and then 10 and the duration one minute. Look at what it does. It takes 2017, January 1st, 12 AM, and then 10, it give us 10 lines where the duration is plus one minute because we haven't changed that yet. So it says 1201, 1202, 12, super cool. So you can do this every minute, every second, every day, whatever you want. We want to have every hour. We don't need every minute. So you just put the one in the hour and you see it's 12, 1, 2, 3, 4. Easy, right? And then we don't want 12, 10, we want the entire day. So we need to put 24, okay? So 
If we go back here, we have 757 days. We need to put this little thing in here, in there, okay? And we gave it a name to the variable. It was number of days. So the only thing I need to do is put number of days there. And as you can see, it's giving us an error again, because that was not a number. It looks like a number. It is not a number. So how do we transform that into a number? We put duration and then here total days. So it gives us the number of days of a duration value. That's what it returns that in you know, the operation. And you can have hours, minutes, seconds, you name it, anything you like. So this is the one that we need, du duration total days. So if we go back, you can put this in a new line. I'm going to put it in the same one. What was it? Duration total days. Oh my God, my memory. Duration dot total days. And now it's giving us a number. So we have 757. If we go to custom, again, to the function that generates our list of daytime, you can see here that it is giving us quite good. So let's turn this into a table. And then let's do ascending. 1st of January, that's cool. And then descending, it will give us the last day that it given us. And then this is the 1st of February. So you know, okay. some days are missing. So what is missing? Do you remember that we need to have for one day, 25 lines? So we need to go up here and say, do these times 24. So we get all the hours, okay? So once we've done that, we go here and it is still not right because you know, it is 12 o'clock today, so this is counting from 0, 0, which is not. So that's why we if we go back here, and now we are going to remove the hard coding we did. So there is a function in M called daytime local now that will give you the daytime of right now on your computer. So you will go into the computer and check what time is it. So if we go here, uh, we're going to remove that and we're going to put date time local now. And look at this. This is 19, uh, so 2019, January 28th, 12 o'clock. It is 12 o'clock right now here in Sweden. So I have to hurry to publish this video, but hey, it works. It, it, I have to say this. Daytime columns, horrible, horrible, horrible performance. They compress very badly. So be careful when we're using this. I'm going to post a link down up on below where you will see how Vertipack, you know, the engine, the DAX engine works and why they have trouble with these. So you should separate them and do stuff. But if you need them, this is the way to do it. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I will rush with the Power Query Challenge. I'll do it as fast as I can. And uh, I'll see you again on Monday. No, on Wednesday. On Wednesday. So take care. Bye.